it's uh, it's much clearer. Okay, Pastor. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's pray and then start. Yeah. Okay. Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this um, for this day that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the good weather, Father God. We we pray for, Lord, your presence in our lives. We thank you for your presence in our lives, Master. The presence of the Holy Spirit that convicts us, refreshes us, Lord. We we just long for you, communion with you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that your words are spirit and they are life. Lord, whenever you speak, oh God, there is so much life that is imparted to us, Lord. Whenever you speak, there is so much hope and comfort, Father God. Yes, Lord, we find meaning, contentment, Lord, joy and purpose, Lord, in you, Father God, when you speak, oh God. And Lord, we pray that every opportunity that we would open our hearts, Lord, to receive from you, Father God. Lord, we pray that our communion with you will be constant and daily and frequent. And Lord, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the friendship that we have with you, that we get to experience with you. You being the Lord of the universe, Lord, and yet you are Emmanuel, God, with us. And more than that, Lord, you call us your friends, Lord. We thank you for that friendship. We thank you for the love you have for us, Lord, the love that heals us, the love that melts, Lord, the hardest of hearts, Lord. And yes, Lord, we commit ourselves, Lord, to the continued ministry of the Holy Spirit, Lord, continue to speak to us, Lord, continue to Lord, build strength in us, Father God, in all the areas that need strength, that need um, change, that need refreshing. Lord, we, we yield ourselves to you and we bring ourselves. And Lord, as your word says that, Lord, um, we come and surrender, Lord, all our members, Lord, uh, to you, Father God, the members of our body, or everything about us, we come and yield so that you can, Lord, speak and have your way, Father God. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you for this time. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, welcome back to worship ministry. I think last class we we looked at um, some basics of equipment, right? So uh, while this this may not be terribly exciting for uh, uh, you know everyone, but this these are fundamentals and these are necessary. Okay, so um, there are people who are very passionate about about this whole thing of equipment and sound and and uh, you know um, uh, both audio and video and so on um, well it's it's good to know it's good to it's good to know what is there in the market it is it is good to know what is available it's uh, important to know you know how to use it and also it's important to have people who know how to use it so that we can use it to the best of um, our ability for effectiveness that's it so this is not our idol uh, this is not the main thing but it is it is a requirement right it is a requirement and uh, the way uh, we do ministry um, contemporary urban or rural uh, ministry these are some things that have become uh, as uh, uh, I would say, you know, it, it, these are not luxuries or privileges, but these are some things that have become as basic uh, requirements. Right? So, so it's good to consider this. It's good to ses, set aside, you know, uh, resources uh, for this, um, because the way the church grows, the way we, uh, you know, use uh, use equipment in the um, on the internet and in the digital, you know, space. Um, it's good to know that, right? Even the most rural of churches that we have been to, people use phones, people use smartphones, people use audio Bibles and so on. So, um, and especially, you know, during the COVID time, uh, almost everyone, you know, started doing uh, Facebook Live and, uh, you know, using uh, video streaming and, and all that. So, so we know, you know, suddenly the world kind of uh, needed to upgrade you know, they kind of went into a fast track course of learning um, this technologies and adapting to technologies and so on. So it's good to know in advance, okay, what is there? And there are people, there are churches who are very progressive in nature saying, okay, what technology can we use, right? So it's not that 
it is not our identity it is not um, you know it is not um, uh, performance based it's not uh, you know something that we idolize but we use it right? it's about us using whatever is available whatever technology is available and be a blessing right so we know you know we follow some ministries and some churches and we ourselves are able to you know put things um, uh, so that it's available you know use maybe a website or uh, social media so that it's available for people now in order to be on such a space in order to use it effectively and in a uh, in a way that's that has good quality we need to have the right equipment you know so that's all there is so we can just see okay uh, Okay, I'm maybe the church uh, is at a very basic stage. How can I better it? How can I grow? And how can I use it to be even more qualitative? You know, if you, um, you know, even today this this morning there was an email. There was an email from a person from uh, not in India, uh, somewhere overseas. I uh, he didn't mention the, the the country, but he was saying, okay, you know, I've seen um, your life coaching. Um, and I want to be part of it. Can we do it online? And I, I need, uh, I want to um, use, um, you know, I want to be, uh, I want to receive you know, life coaching in all these areas. Like he said, he mentioned three areas. And I said, I know, and he said, I want to use it. So he said, sure, we can. So, so that's the thing. You know, that's our, so when it comes to ministry as pastors, as spiritual leaders, this should be our mindset, right? That we're not, intensely focused or idolize these things and give it importance way beyond uh, or give it the dependence way beyond you know our dependence on the word or spirit we're not doing that but we use it uh, effectively and uh, uh, intelligently so that it can be a blessing you know there are so many churches we that bless us right so so many ministries um, men, women of God who bless us, and we are blessed because of the technology and uh, with the right use of equipment to enhance the quality of what is used, right? So that's the rightful place of technology and equipment in ministry, and particularly worship ministry, which heavily uses all kinds of gadgets and all kinds of equipment, right? Right from the musicians who use, you know, uh, maybe the, um, the guitars or um, you know keyboards and uh, with the various kinds of effects and also you know now we use you know keyboards which are connected to laptops and which have uh, various tones uh, downloaded on them so you use a MIDI keyboard and you know laptop and softwares like Ableton and so on to to really use. Uh, you know, maybe it's a small group. They can actually use variety of instruments through that, right? So, um, so all this is possible, okay? But the end, the goal, the objective is that the Lord is glorified, and we don't have an, a toxic or unhealthy dependence on it, right? We need to check ourselves over and over again, um, you know, and it it cannot be a replacement for. The word of God, replacement for the presence of God, the power of God, right? Okay. So, having said that, let's look at um, yeah. Let's look at. Let's just continue from where we left off about equipment. We saw that uh, you know there are some basic sound equipments that we use in worship settings, and so we looked at mics, microphones, which um, which actually take in that analog sound waves and collect it and, and convert it into electrical impulses and these are these can be amplified by um, uh, 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 when it connected to a mixer through an amplifier and so it comes through the speaker it's amplified basic right uh, but it's very useful sound boards or mixers we saw what it is we see that it has multiple inputs, so your mics, instruments, and everything go into one place, and that can be effectively mixed. When we say mixed, we are saying all the levels are set. You know, the vocals can be set at, let's say, 10, and the drums can be set at 2, and the bass guitar can be set at maybe 3 or 4, and the other 
you know, uh, keyboards and uh, other guitars, which are accompanying instruments, can be set at maybe five or six, right? And uh, the other background vocals can be set at eight. So we see that, you know, everything is set at different levels so that the output is optimum, right? Optimal. So we're talking about worship ministry, right? So, so when we hear a song, it's not like hey, the music is loud or that person's voice is overpowering the others or this guitar or drums is sounding louder. And I'm sure you would have been in services or you know been in environments where that is the case, right? Which means it's the mixing was not done well. Okay. Now there are also tone what we call as tone controls for each of the channel in the uh, in the mixer. Okay, so let me just quickly, um, um, yeah, maybe show that also. We looked at uh, mixer. Let's say Yamaha. Okay. Um, Okay, I've gone to Amazon. <laughs> okay, let me just. Um... Okay, so here it is. <clears throat> so we see this. Um, so each of these rows, right? Each of these um, are called, it's called a channel, each one. Right? So that is what we mean by channel. So let's say a mic, mic goes here. Mic, <clears throat> yeah, this is better. So a mic might go in channel number one. <clears throat> we can use an instrument in channel number two. We can use another mic in channel number three, something in channel number four, right? So each one is called a channel. So if you see this, each channel, the tone can be uh, fixed. A tone can be, the volume can be done. So this is what we call as tone. These three knobs, or you know, which is uh, high, the mids, the lows, right? So the high, mids, and the lows. So high is the high frequency. So you take <clears throat> now what I'm speaking is in the low frequency, you know, and it something higher than that would be the mid, and something really high, you know, that's a high frequency, right? So all this can be adjusted, right? So when it comes to a, let's say a lady who's singing, a female vocalist will naturally have a high frequency. Right, it's it'll, the voice is higher than that of a male, so it's shrill. So what we need to do is this knob has should not be high. In fact, it has to be lower. It has to be brought lower because the voice is naturally shrill. Like somebody like a bass voice, you know, somebody has got a low voice. Well, this knob which is low should not be high. That should be brought low because that person's voice is naturally low so you don't want to enhance it further right you might want to increase the highs uh, so that you know it, it's it's not booming all around and it's, and it's the, there is clarity so all these things so it, each one is called a channel and then we have the uh, we have the tone right okay um okay so we have uh, the channel, we have the tone, then we have what is called the uh, auxiliary units or auxes. And this is uh, this is also important. This is something that is important. It was there in the uh, channel, uh, in, the, in the mixer. So what this does is, you know, do, there are two kinds of, so, the, so everything goes into the mixer and then flows out of the mixer, right? The inputs go into the mixer and flow out of the mixer. And uh, to flow out, to flow in, we use cables, right? So mic, use the cable, so that flows in. Signals flow in, use cables, so signals flow out. And these cables are fixed to the speakers, right? You might, you might have noticed these big speakers, which are there. So we call them as front of house, FOH, front of house speaker. So this is what the audience or the church listens to. Right, so it's there. But what we call as aux here, auxiliary send, it is you. It is sent out for some speakers which are there for those on stage to hear. 
right? So if I'm a speaker, if I'm speaking, yeah, I need to hear what I'm saying, right? And in a in, let's say in a big space where maybe thousands, two thousand people are sitting, and these front of house speakers are really in front of you, ahead of you, right? So you speak, the the crowd is able to hear, but you don't hear clearly what you're saying. Right, because it's all amplified and goes out. And just imagine there are ten people on the worship team and they're playing; they cannot hear accurately what they are playing or singing. So there's always a um, chance for mistakes. You know, they play the wrong note, they play the wrong beat, they sing at a different pitch because they can't hear. There's no reference point. So we have what is called as monitors. Right. So these uh, and in in Bible ecology also, you know, we have one monitor right there in front so that people who are online can you know we can hear them or we have those small speakers in front so that whatever they're speaking so these are basically monitors so it is actually sending back what i am speaking what we what we are singing so that we can hear accurately now these monitors can be a speaker right in front so that you can hear or it can be an in ear you know something like this where only that person can hear and not everybody else. And it's a great advantage because the whole team can have separate you know, speak in ears like this, separate earphones like this, and the mix can be separate for each. You know, suppose I, I want you know more of what I'm hearing. I want to hear the guitar more. I want to hear the pastor when he comes on for the ministry time, or I want to hear the worship leader. So I can we can actually set it individually. Right and well, uh, there are certain mixers which facilitate that. So there are some basic mixers which don't facilitate that. So, so the thing is, the important thing is for aux or auxiliary sends, uh, we, we refer to them as aux. So we get to hear so that we can be even more accurate. Okay, uh, moving on. Effect. You know, these are effects. So what are some effects? I'm sure you know in a in a space you, you would have heard. You know, typically this, um, you know, the cine groups, you know, you might have gone on the road, they have the stage and then they are saying something and then there's a, you know, they say, okay, the next song that we're going to sing, 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 you know, is from this movie, from this song, you know, and then they, so what is that? That's an effect. Right? Because when we speak, there's no effect, right? There's no special effect. Uh, but you can have effect like an echo or a reverb and uh, a delay and so on so which adds to the voice so if there is a room if you're singing and uh, you know if there if it's heavily carpeted for example you know you're using a lot of curtains carpets and so on and there is no echo right it just cuts down when you put carpets curtains it absorbs sound right so it's like a studio it just you know it just absorbs sound so there's no echo sound doesn't hit the wall reflect and you know, so that causes an echo. When you hit, when it hits something, sound bounces. It's a sound wave, right? It hits a wall, it hits ceiling, and comes back. And sometimes, if it's a you know high ceiling, if there's a thing, that's why in cathedrals, you know, there's a lot of reverb and choirs sing. You know, there's there's a lot of echo. And you might have you know experienced it if you step into a you know empty house before you moved in the furniture and everything. You you clap your hand or you say something. There is a you know the sound sounds differently, right? But when you move in the furniture and when you you know fill in the place when you move in your stuff, and then it it sounds normal because everything absorbs sound. A human body also absorbs sound. So um, so when people are there, when the church is full, they are absorbing sound. So there's no chance for an echo or, or it minimizes. So when we use a little of these effects like reverb, okay, so it reverberates a little bit, and these echo, I mean, effects like chorus or delay, and these are built into the mixer. It enhances the sound. It makes it a little more vibrant, uh, and you know, and in especially when it comes to uh, not so much for speaking, but for singing, it really helps. You know, when there is a little bit of sustain on your voice. Um, it sounds sweeter when there's a little bit of reverb. It sounds full, right? It's suppose your voice is thin, and then you you have a kind of reverb add to it, uh, added to it. 
it sounds fuller, right? So it sounds sweeter, it sounds fuller, it sounds richer, and all that is possible with the FX, right? Okay, so equalizer, we we went through that. So all this uh, can be done. And here are some more things. Amplifier, we talked about it. Uh, you can just, um, you know, it's just an equipment which amplifies sound, increases the sound. It can be separate. And uh, some of these are actually built into the speakers these days and what we call as power speakers. So they amplify it. So there's no requirement for an external amplifier. Speakers, okay, there's an interesting thing called the snake. Okay. Um, this is also. Uh, this also has become a requirement these days. So let me just uh, pull out what a snake looks like. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I think this is a good picture. Okay, let me just. Right. OK, so here we have, this is a typical snake cable. So it's called a snake because it's it's a long cable, right? So it's, uh, it's, um, it's a long cable, but it has several inputs. Right? So what happens is, um, let's say you have a big choir, you have an orchestra, you have you know, a team that is there. And all these inputs from your mics, you know, you, these are all several mic inputs, you know, from the cable. So you have, let's say you have, you know, I think this one has uh, 16 channels at least, you know. So you use 16 mics uh, or 16 instruments, whatever. Everything goes into this. Now, this box is kept on the stage, right? So this box is kept on the stage. All the mics and instruments and everything, the input goes here. And this cable goes all the way from the stage to where the mixer is. Right? And then all of these cables uh, from, the, from this snake cable, they go into the mixer. So what this prevents is that, one, the length. Right? If you have a mic cable, it, it's typically maybe a, uh, you know, three meters, four meters, whatever. But let's imagine, you know, a scene where the, the hall is like maybe forty feet, you know, or so, and uh, so which means the mixer, the sound for the person to sit and mix, it has to be at the end or at the middle. So, you know, just imagine, you know, hundreds of or maybe you know tens and twenties of cables just running all the way, and something just gets unplugged. The whole Thing and you know becomes a problem. You know you, you don't you're not able to figure out hey which cable got unplugged where. So the snake cable actually is very very important, especially if you're using a mixer setup, and if the mixer is somewhere further away. So we use this uh, effectively, right? So this is uh, it just bunches everything, and it's all these inputs. It it comes under uh, you know covered by this sheath which uh, covers it and it becomes one mega big huge cable and it it has a long length you know this one is 25 feet you know it's 16 channels 25 feet and so it's custom made to whatever length there could be right okay um yeah so those are some things that are very useful uh, that's the cable that's called the snake and then, yeah, we looked at monitor speakers. Uh, we already spoke about that, right? OK, so um, uh, I hope there are no questions. Uh, if there are, we can, we can ask them now. Any questions? Um, OK, fine. Let's, uh, let's just move on to. Uh, the other thing, which is also recording equipment, right? So when it comes to um, when it comes to recording, okay, how do you record? Okay, how do you normally record your voice? Anyone? Suppose somebody's singing, how do you record it? 
it's not a trick question simple question how do you record nowadays anyone phone mic pastor yeah use your phone you i think that's the basic thing you know everybody records you as a video audio you know you just use uh, your phone to record right those days we had a cassette player recorder you put a cassette and then you, know, you used to record it and and you know that's the way to record right so now we record with your with our phones so suppose you're using mics uh you're using a you know you're using a mixer let's say worship team is singing what do you think would be the best way to record you know you can use your phone right but the phone would also pick up all the ambient noise right maybe there's a baby crying maybe there's somebody chopping wood there's a tractor which is going you know all those things will also be captured in the in in the in the phone that you use so it may not be it's it's not the best way to uh, record uh, any any audio you know especially when it comes to worship let's say you want to put a song you want to record something and you want to um, you record your service and you want to put it on the uh, on youtube you, know, you want to record the songs you want to put it on youtube so um, it's important that we have some basic equipment right so both to capture the sound which we call as audio equipments and to ca capture the the sight of it, the visuals for which we use video equipment right so so one such um, uh, so let's say you know for example everything is going everything is digital signal is going through the mixer so from the mixer we need to take an output that can record okay so how do we record it do we record it on the phone do we record it on a camera you know, all these are possible right? do we record it through the laptop so all these are possible so but then how do i you know with what kind of an equipment do i need right so i just plug in a cable and will the uh, will the laptop be able to record uh, definitely not because it needs to convey all those signals to your laptop or any recording uh, equipment right so so when we look at that we we need to have what we call as an interface as a bridge between the uh, audio between the mixer uh, and the recording equipment okay so so something that uh, that is really useful uh, is what we call as an audio interface okay so let's take a uh, let's take a look at one of those i think we have it in the bible college in our classroom second year uh, third year classroom also uh, where it's a it's a basic uh, interface right right there in the in front you would have seen one black box into which we um into which we present i mean into, into which we put all these things so um yeah let's uh, look at that okay it's something like this okay it's um okay so this is what it looks like so it's got it's a very basic one so it's got an input here so you, if you if you notice in the bible college in the classroom you have a black box there and you put you know something like this right the mic goes in and uh, you know your other mic also goes in it could be like this or it could be um something at the back um let's see okay so this is what it looks like right so this one this particular socket can take your mic cable or an instrument cable so it goes in and there is an output and uh, you know this is the headphone thing so that's normally where we fix our small speakers so the online class can listen you know they can hear uh, or they can speak and when and they speak we can hear through that uh, headphone jack right uh, which is connected to those small speakers that we use so and these two you know we use to uh, fix the uh, the uh, connect the cables uh, my cables right so um so we have that and also uh in the back okay, is that a picture of that okay uh, we don't have that picture okay so that will take care of uh, you know there is a connection between that and the the recording instrument or the you know or the laptop it could most of the times we use a laptop so it uses 
um, there's a, there's a connection there. You know, there's a special cable. There's a special uh, connection there, and uh, that takes care of it. So, so by so using this, we actually are able to record. We are able to also transmit. So, which means this sound is transmitted. Suppose it goes into a laptop, and then you use it for streaming. Um, then, then also it helps, right? So you're able to get good quality sound. Um, this this interface helps, uh, uh, and then you can set the levels, and you can send it out. So this interface is useful for you know somebody who wants to record. You know, you've got a keyboard, you've got a guitar, and you you, you want to sing. This is useful to record it, right? So this is for recording just the audio, okay? Um, yeah, so okay, so so we use that, um, and there are other uh, software tools uh, on your laptop, you know, which is like Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase, all, all these these softwares. These are used for um, uh, in your laptop to mix, to record, right? So. I've never personally used, and but I, you know, all all our uh, the media team uses this extensively, and it is also used extensively for uh, streaming, right? Because uh, what happens is when it goes on, I mean, if you're interested, if it goes on the internet, um, all these signals are actually suppressed, right? So it doesn't sound. You may have realized, hey, in church, it sounded very different. But when I listen to the stream, live stream, it sounds very different. Right? Why is it? It is because in the church, you know, there is a hall, there's a natural reverb, and uh, and it's it's it sounds so much better, right? Most times than when we listen to a live stream, because in the live stream, all these signals are compressed, right? Because there is only so much bandwidth. The internet speed, the internet capacity to transfer this all these signals, so it gets compromised. Right, the quality of sound gets compromised. It's you know either the levels fall down or it sounds very shrill or some frequencies are so. So there's a you know there's a another. It goes so what happens now? It is goes into another mixer, and that gets further enhanced or some signals get pushed up, some signals get pushed down. So that on the stream, it sounds as close as possible to the original, right? So this happens when we record as well. So when we record, uh, when everything is captured, you know, we need to do that. We need to do this enhancement so that it's captured well. You know, it might sound good live, but um, does it sound the same uh, when it's you know when it's uh, captured in an audio? Or it could be the vice versa. You know, sometimes the the audio when it's recorded, sorry. That sounds way better because it's all these effects are there. It's enhanced uh, than when we sing live. You know, it could it could happen both ways. Okay, okay. So, uh, what's the other thing? Video, right? So when it comes to video, I'm not an expert. Confession, but we know that basic things like cameras and you have you need a tripod for a stand for the cameras. Different kinds of cameras are there um, where the picture. Quality is different, and uh, we call them as definitions. Or they could be high definitions, which means the picture is more pronounced, clearer, well defined. All the colors come out well, so uh, that also can be changed. And, and just like how you take a picture on your phone and using filters, and you know, there's so much um, that you can do with your phone itself, right? So there is also editing software. So why do we need to edit, right? So when it comes to videos, we need to edit certain things. Maybe the cameras were focusing on something, you know, for, for example, I think it was one particular meeting that was happening, and then the camera person didn't realize that the main camera I'm talking about, it was being streamed, and the camera person didn't realize that the camera was facing the ceiling, <laughs> right? So it was actually... Now the camera was up, the meeting was happening, and then somebody had to point out 
I think it was Pastor who said, hey, camera is up. And then, you know, he was able to focus. So these things, if you're recording it and you're putting it on, on a YouTube channel, you need to edit it out. It means you need to delete it, right? So, um, so we need to have a software to enable us to do that. So I think a lot of these things, uh, people know it already because it's available on your smartphone to a, you know, to some extent, right? You can edit your videos. And I think when we post, you know, stuff on Instagram and uh, Instagram reels or Instagram stories, you know, people use all this. So there's so much of high quality visual videos that are coming out these days. And it's amazing. Like, Almost everybody is like getting highly skilled in capturing. They just need to have an eye for detail and you know, eye for you know how best. And it's just a matter of time that everybody you know gets the skill. Okay. Uh, when we talk about videos, we also need to think about lighting. Okay. So um, lighting is important because what you capture, it uh, it it either can get enhanced or it can. It can give a poor quality because of the light, right? Um, if you you know if you think of outdoors, you know, especially when you're shooting a video or a picture or something outdoors, you need to be a little careful because the sunlight, what we depend on, is not constant, right? We know that you know it's it's changing. It's or the Earth is moving around the sun, and then you know the uh, our shadows are falling, and also the light. Uh, the sun is at a certain angle and around noon it's right over above us and then it just keeps going so we need to be careful because the light keeps shifting it's not constant and when it keeps shifting in a video uh it doesn't look good right the shadows fall at long you know at wrong places and sometimes you know it it makes you uh look very different because the way the shadow falls you know if there's a if there's light and there's a shadow falling on your face, um, you're not able to see clearly and so on. So um, lighting indoors, the, we can control. And therefore, you know, we have all these lightings and uh, it it helps. It helps to create an ambience, create an environment. Again, I just want to say that, you know, even before we look at this, um, well, lighting, um, just like uh, how sound, what sound does, what music does, lighting also affects our emotions, affects our mood, right? Like if you go out, if it's a gloomy day, right? I think like we, what we had three or four days, when you go out in the sunlight, there you feel good, you feel better, yeah? You, your mood is better rather than having a gloomy thing all the time, right? When there is light, it you you know you feel your mood is enhanced you feel better emotionally you feel good you feel that hey everything's right to the world you know um, so that happens so lighting has an effect on our emotions I and mean, there's a bright light for example it's more celebratory and you know you're happy and and if their lighting is low then it becomes a uh, uh, you know, you're able to convey, lighting conveys something, you know, just like music, right? Uh, low lights or dim lights convey something. It's about, it's about intimacy, it's about closeness, and uh, you know, it's, things are quieter, right? So, so we can use that. We can use lighting. Again, you know, we cannot manipulate people's emotions. We should not, we, it's not that we cannot, but we should not, right? Because actually, uh, when if you look at a movie, they use different lightings to convey different moods, just like how different music, kinds of music are used to convey different moods. So lighting definitely plays a part and it sets the theme, the tone for what is about to happen and what, the director or the producer wants to convey through a particular scene, right? So, um, so lighting has an effect. So one should be concerned about it. What kind of lighting you use? It can, uh, it can, it can enhance the visual. It can do that. But then uh, we need to be careful, right? Um, in the sense, we don't 
depend highly on it you know no light means no presence you know it's not nothing like that um you know we can have the best of you know times of just offering our worship to the lord irrespective of it but it also since it affects emotions right we can use it right okay um okay any questions here any thoughts here so all this comes at a cost right um lighting comes at a cost you know especially if it's uh, if it's theater right uh, let's say you want to do as a worship team you want to do uh, a music production maybe as a church you want to do a music production we use lights you know uh, i think some of us were there for the easter uh, production um i think the students probably were on vacation i think right were you were you here for easter for the this year in end of march third year students uh i wasn't sure anyway so so if you notice that lighting had to be used right lighting had to be used because it had to be you know we we need to bring focus to certain people who were singing certain parts and the others need not be uh you know focused on so there was a you know there was a dimming of lights there was a you know uh, especially that scene on, about the resurrection you know there were lighting was used specifically uh in a certain way so, so in order to dramatize things right so so um it comes with a cost we need to understand that it comes with a cost so so as a church as a ministry do you want to use it uh, do you need it uh if not just you know uh keep it functional right don't um, don't even venture into it because it comes at a cost right uh, i'm not getting too much into lighting because lighting also has its own details like mixing of lights the kind of lights uh, and so on right so but it's good for us to understand okay lighting does this lighting has its advantages and also uh, the right place for lighting you know in all this what we do as ministry right okay one last thing before we go for a break is about uh, the projection software that we use in worship you know we've certainly you know we've come a long way in terms of um, uh, projection soft softwares um we've you know uh, we've used i know we've used uh, hymn books right Churches still do use hymn books. Why do we use projection softwares? Because we want to, um, we want to, you know, put the lyrics, whatever we want to sing, we want to say, we put it on, uh, we project it onto a screen. Well, that's the projection software, right? Um, let's say we want. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember this. Let me show you that. Um, Okay, how many of you have used this or remember this? Let me see your hands. Okay, this thing that we see here, this equipment. How many of you have used it, seen it? No? Wow. Totally different generation. <laughs> okay, how many of you have seen it? I see a lot of uh, people who have not seen it. Okay, Shiv Kumar. Okay, so this is this was what we called as an overhead projector, okay, back in the day, and it was the cutting edge of the cutting edge of technology then, right? So yeah, see, uh, I think the, all the slightly older folks are saying yes, we've seen it. Okay, so this is what we used. So this, on this, uh, so this is a light, right? This is the light source, powerful light, and there's a lens here, and it projects onto the screen. So you see some. material which is projected there so we had a screen we had this and so every song or anything that you announcement or whatever you uh, projected it was printed on a piece of transparent plastic sheet it was a thick pra transparent plastic sheet so we printed it uh, we just like how you take a regular print out or you could even xerox material on it so these were called transparency sheets uh, probably a4 size So if you want to sing one song we had to pick out that sheet and put it on this okay 
and you had to manually kind of use it up and down, scroll it up and down. Uh, of course, you could magnify it, uh, and that's how we used, you know, we uh, that's how we sang our songs, right? And of course, when we were moving from oh, Nikhil is saying first time. <laughs> um, okay, so so this is something that we used, you know, overhead projectors, um, and uh, it was very useful. It it will get heated up. But uh, it was very useful. We could, and it was bright. It was nice. We could use it. Um, so only the problem here was we used. We had to have a file, right? We had to have a file with all these sheets in you know, alphabetical order. We had to have a. We had a folder. So all the songs starting in A will be in that folder. You know, just now, uh, right now, you have it on your laptop, and you just do a you know Control F and you search. But now, then it was manual. It was physical, so you had to physically take out that sheet. You know, uh, you, so you, the person who was putting it on had to know. Okay, um, okay, the song is in this particular uh, folder, particular section of the folder. So you take take it out and put it. So if you didn't have that, there's no way of you know searching, uh, googling, nothing. You know, you didn't have it. You didn't put the you didn't put the words. That's it. Right, so this was how it was done. So now, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, advanced projection system, what we call as a LCD or a LED projector. Right. So I'm sure all of us are very uh, familiar, well acquainted with these kind of equipments. Right. So let me just put it up as well. Um, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So you see this uh, a typical LED projector. So this um, you know this can project onto a screen. It has. It can actually. You can use a video for it. I can project a video. You can project, uh, you know, in in the overhead projector, which is we could just put only, um, you know, this the pictures. Uh, or if it is a text, we could put text. So no moving um, pictures or or videos, right? So here you have the advantage of all that, and uh, it's connected to the laptop, so it's very versatile. So you can use that, right? So, so yes, you know, even we see that even in rural churches. Right. We we see people using technology and uh, you know things like this so that it becomes very convenient. Right. So the laptop is connected to the sound system. You can play videos. You want to play, you know, the Jesus movie. You know, it's, it becomes very compact. Just two bags. You just take it, put some speakers there, and then connect it and use it. Right. Okay. So we'll stop here. Take a break, and then we'll come back. <laughs> 